April 28th, 9.15 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby, number three. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm Apollo Justice, and I'm fine. Is Apollo okay? He's been muttering to himself all morning. He's been like that since yesterday. Guess the pressure of today's trial is getting to him. Poor Polly. He's really tearing himself up over all this. Get it together, Apollo! Yikes! Athena! When did you get here? Try to relax a little bit, will you? You're getting yourself way too worked up. Yeah, but I'm alright. I'm fine. You know, I did a little digging on this Neyuta Sadmati guy. He's apparently not your run-of-the-mill prosecutor. Oh yeah? What did you find out? Well, they say he wields an incredible power to accurately read a trial's karma and its ultimate fate. What is that supposed to mean? I don't have all the details, but apparently he can foresee how the arguments will go and even lead his opposition. So the defense basically ends up going in whatever direction he has in his head. Man, this isn't going to be a cakewalk if that's true. Ema did say she talked to him for us, though. Here's hoping that went well. In any case, it sounds like he's going to keep us on our toes. That's why I know you're ready. Why I know I can leave Trucy in the office to you. I believe in you, Apollo. Mr. Wright is putting his faith in me. I can't let him down now. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. There he goes again. It's almost like he's chanting a prayer. I'm fine. I'm fine. Apollo Ju I'm Apollo Justice, and I'm fine. If you say so, Apollo. The trial will start momentarily. Is the defense ready? Yes. We're fine. Trucy's fate and the fate of the agency rests on this trial. This is it, Justice. If ever there was a time to shine, it's now. April 28th, 9.30 a.m. District Court. Courtroom number six. All rise. Court is now in session for the trial of Trucy Wright. The defense is ready, Your Honor. And the prosecution? Um, Prosecutor Sadmati. A thousand pardons. It was rude of me to keep you waiting. I was praying for the victim. Oh, praying? Yes, yes, I see. You're a Krynus monk, correct, Prosecutor? Yes, that is correct. I am but a lowly monk from the kingdom of Kry. I beg in advance for the forgiveness and kind patience of everyone here in this court. I am unfamiliar with the proceedings of this country and may make many blunders. Hmm, he seems like such a gentle-mannered soul, doesn't he? I wonder if Ima had a chance to talk with him about Trucy. Now then, Prosecutor Satmari, your opening statement, if you would. Certainly. In the name of the Holy Mother, I vow to guide the victim's soul to a land of eternal peace known as the Twilight Realm. Now, let the last rites of the victim begin. Nayuta Satmari. He's really been making a name for himself, apparently, but... That nickname, Last Rites Prosecutor. I wonder how that will come into play today. The incident took place in the middle of a spectacular magic show. The accused performed a magic trick in which she thrust a sword into a coffin. A coffin from which the body of the victim then spilled out, dead from a fatal stab. The victim's name was Manoff Mystery, otherwise known as the Great Mr. Reyes. His blood was found on the sword that was used during the magic trick. Autopsy report added. So his death was just an unfortunate accident? 
it is only natural for one to assume as such, Your Honor. However, it was no mere accident, but rather a homicide. The prosecution's position is thus, that this was a murder made to look like an accident. I see. You believe this crime was committed by the defendant? After a thorough consideration of all possible scenarios, I unfortunately had no choice but to conclude as much. So that's how it's going to be, huh? I guess Ema couldn't convince him after all. Very well, and now let us hear from the defense. Naturally, we maintain that the defendant is innocent, Your Honor. If the defense wouldn't mind, could you please explain your reasoning? My reasoning? Um, well, I would have to say that my main reason is because I believe in the defendant. I see. So you find it difficult to come up with anything more concrete than that, do you? What a fine demonstration of the fact that you are indeed a lawyer of putrid mind. P putrid mind? P Prosecutor Sadmani! Excuse me! But I... If you don't mind my asking, Prosecutor, what was that you were just chanting? A sutra of the Holy Mother that guides those of tainted soul toward enlightenment. It is a Quranist incantation to awaken the foolish from their fruitless slumber. Fitting for a lawyer who indulges in such fancy as the innocence of the accused. Uh, I see. So basically, you're asking the defense to get real? Allow me these few words, defense. It is my duty as a monk to punish sinners, and to guide victim souls to the twilight realm. Should you show repentance and admit to the accused guilt now, no harm will come to you. But, should you interfere with my sacred last rites for the victim, then I shall cast you down to the pit of hell along with Chusi Wright. Now, wait just one minute here. Putrid? Pit of hell? Is there any way to address someone in a court of law? Mm, Prosecutor Sadmati, that may be the way you conduct trials in Kuride, but I would appreciate it if you would refrain from such charged language here. Your Honor, that was but a crying sermon for those who have strayed from the path. Harsh words are often necessary to admonish contemptible de deviants who cannot see reason. Oh, I see. I didn't realize. I guess they really do hate defense attorneys in crying, huh? Even still, that was way, way over the top as far as verbal abuse goes. And the trial's only just begun. Hmm. Well, defense, I suppose the way a prosecutor does things varies by country. Why don't we look at this as a cross-cultural exchange and try to be open-minded about it? What? Bailiff, please bring in the first witness. Uh-oh. I thought she'd said goodbye to the Snackers. <laughs> Detective Sky, the courtroom is no place for gorging yourself. What's wrong with having a little snack? Girls gotta eat, right? She uh, seems a little stressed out. Detective Sky, your testimony, please. Yeah, about that. I just want to state for the record that I believe Chusi Wright's innocent. I'm sorry? Detective Sky, this path you seek to follow is misguided. Giving the wrongdoer false hope will only deepen her despair in the end. But I... Let it go and move on. Acts which go against your duty will earn you divine punishment from the Holy Mother. Fine. I don't know about the divine part, but I get the punishment bit loud and clear. I guess Emma's got to sign tons of paperwork or something for sticking up for Trucy. She and Prosecutor Sadmani don't seem to get along very well, do they? Shall we continue? The prosecution contends that the accused had a clear motive. The evidence, if you would, Detective Sky. 
All right. Please take a look at this poster. It's the True Premiere poster from 13 years ago. Hmm. Is it just me, or is it a little different from the one in Miss Wright's dressing? This is a revised version of that poster. This one says cancelled under Mr. Reyes. That's right. Mayus Mr. Reyes left the troupe after the first version of the poster was printed. Take a look at Mr. Reyes' right forearm near his elbow. See the big scar there? He apparently got that when he made a mistake while practicing a magic trick. Ouch, that's quite a scar. Because of the accident, Manify Grammaire concluded Mr. Reyes was too unskilled. Just before the show was to open, Manify announced Mr. Re Reyes wouldn't be appearing. But in defiance of Manify's decision, Mr. Reyes tried to go on stage anyway. This in turn caused Manify to oust Mr. Reyes from the troupe on the spot. Did he kick Mr. Reyes out? That seems rather extreme. Did he really have to go that far? When it came to magic, Troop Grammaire was so passionate. Or should I say extreme, about it that it caused problems for them from time to time. Hmm, yes, they even caused this court a mountain of trouble with their extreme antics. And now the troop's successor has committed a murder. It seems the troop's rare talent was inherited by the right person after all. A putrid talent for criminality. You sound rather extreme yourself, Prosecutor. Criminals with impure souls do not deserve sympathy, Your Honor. Ahem. <clears throat> As I was saying, after his expulsion, Mr. Reyes apparently went on to hold a grudge against the troop. He would tell those close to him, I will get my revenge on Troop Grammaire someday. Revenge? Mm, that certainly sounds antagonistic. Yep. And then his chance for revenge finally came. If you will be so kind, Detective Sky. I guess I don't have a choice, do I? Witness testimony. The defendant's motive. The victim planned to get his revenge on Troop Grammaire during Trucy's magic show. Mr. Reyes was going to first steal the Grammaire notebook from the defendant. He then intended to reveal the secrets behind their magic tricks during the show. That was the victim's plan for revenge, and while he did in fact steal the notebook, the defendant murdered him before he had a chance to reveal the secrets. By the time the accused had discovered the notebook's theft, it was too late. Her only option was to kill Mr. Reyes and make it look like an accident. Objection! That's nothing but conjecture! Objection. The victim's assistant, Bonnie DeFam, gave the police a statement. She testified that just before the start of the show, Mr. Reyes said, I'm going to reveal all of Troop Grammaire's secrets on stage today. What? Hmm, well that isn't exactly a great starting point for a rebuttal, is it? You're telling me. Allow me to give you one piece of advice, defense. Oh, and what's that? Let it go and move on. Excuse me? Helping a sinner will only sully your own soul. One possessed of an unclean soul will burn in the flames of hell, and then be ever burdened with that sin in their next life. But what? I don't believe in that sort of thing. Besides, I have no intention of giving up. Oh, Holy Mother, grant me the strength to deal with this putrid lawyer. All actions have consequences, and yours will surely earn you the honor of being a mere stink butt at best in your next life. A stink butt? Now then, Mr. Stick... I mean, Mr. Justice, your cross-examination, please. Fifteen minutes in, and the game has only just begun. The victim planned to get his revenge on Troop Grammaire during Trucy's magic show. Mr. Reyes was going to first steal the Grammaire notebook from the defendant. He then intended to reveal the secrets behind their magic tricks during the show. That was the victim's plan for revenge, and while he did in fact steal the notebook, the defendant murdered him before he had a chance to reveal the secrets. Hold it! I'm sorry, but what exactly is the basis for claiming it was murder? 
beats me. What? The basis is beats me? You'll have to ask Prosecutor Sadmati over there because he hasn't told me his reasoning either. Detective Sky, your feeding of information to the defense has not gone unnoticed by my eyes. Ugh. The bad karma of acts which go against your duty will impinge upon you in your next life. But even before that, it may impinge upon your job in the form of a transfer. Ah! Please don't get me kicked out of the forensics unit. Anything but that. Poor Emma. She's really been risking everything for us. Well, Prosecutor Sadmati, what are your grounds for claiming homicide? It was the luminous tape in the understage passage. I realized that it had been moved. Moved so that Mr. Reyes would climb up into the downstage coffin by mistake. What? Mr. Reyes, who was wearing in the understage passage, was supposed to have used the upstage ladder, shown here on the left. He was to climb up into the coffin that had been set up in the backstage area. After being turned into a stuffed dragon during Act 1, Mr. Reyes was supposed to come back to life and emerge from that coffin. But the luminous tape had been moved to mark the downstage ladder. So the victim climbed up into the coffin on the stage itself by mistake. The very same coffin the accused thrust her sword into. And you have proof that it was my client who moved that tape? But of course. Detective Sky? Hmm? Oh, that's right. I identified the defendant's fingerprints on the luminous tape. You what? He actually had proof? Well, defense, are you finally ready to let it all go and move on? Absolutely not! Detective, please add the information about the prints on the tape to your testimony. The defendant's prints were on the tape. I guess she must have moved it during the show. I don't think so. Believe me, I know. Objection! I'm sorry, Detective Sky, but there's a flaw in your testimony. Oh, really? The prosecution is claiming that Miss Wright moved the understage tape during the show in order to guide the victim into the coffin downstage. But it doesn't make sense that she would leave prints on the tape at that time. It doesn't? Please consider the fingerprinting results of the main coffin, which shows that not one of my client's fingerprints was found on or in it. That's true. We didn't find any of her prints on that coffin. Hmm? I think you've realized what the flaw in your testimony is. Claiming Miss Wright left prints on the tape during the show is inconsistent with the facts because she was wearing gloves during the show. Oh! She must have left the prints sometime before the show started. In other words, her prints do not prove she moved the tape to mislead the victim. The prosecution's investigation was insufficient. Oh my! But on a personal level, I'm very happy about that. Well, Prosecutor Sadmati, if the defense's argument is true, then you have no evidence that a defendant moved the tape to deceive the victim. I see. Apparently the defense is more intelligent than I had thought. More of an astink butt at any rate. Come on, you can bump me up to at least a stack beetle now, can't you? Would that really be any better? Of course, way better. Stag beetles are cool with those huge mandibles of theirs. Talk to them. If the defense wishes to be promoted to a stag beetle, then answer me this question. All right, sure. Even with no evidence that the accused moved the tape to misguide the victim, the victim still climbed the ladder using the tape as a guide and entered the coffin on the stage. The accused then thrust her sword in the said coffin with the victim in it. So what you're saying is, the fact remains that the victim was stabbed to death, right? Precisely. However, this does drastically change one aspect of this case. If the accused did not leave the victim into the coffin on purpose, then it means the victim's death could have been accidental. If it was indeed an accident, the defense can argue that it was involuntary manslaughter. 
I see. If it was involuntary manslaughter, they could plead extenuating circumstances, and the severity of the crime could be mitigated. Defense, if you believe the accused did not murder the victim, then do you argue that it was an accident? This is it, the all-important question. The defense argues that Mr. Reyes' death was, in fact, murder. The defense maintains that the defendant is entirely innocent. We believe that it wasn't an accident, but murder. And what's more, we believe it was committed by a third party. A third party? As in the true culprit is someone else? Hmm, <laughs> that is quite a brazen claim to make, and one wholly without grounds. Your voice is as loud as your suit, and your mind echoes just as loudly in emptiness. <sighs> Surely you were but a loud red pepper in your previous life. I've been demoted to a vegetable! Wow, I didn't know a person could be reincarnated as a non sentient plant. In any case, I do have grounds to make this claim. Let us hear this reasoning of yours, then. Alright, but before I give it, there is one question that we need to address. If the victim was killed by some third party, then the sword the defendant thrust into the coffin wasn't the cause of death. If that's the case, then how did we wind up with a dead body inside the coffin? A very good question. Now let's hear your opinion, Mr. Justice. How did the victim's body wound up inside the coffin? Simple. He was killed under stage. What if the victim was killed under the stage before being put in the coffin? In other words, what if the victim was already dead in the coffin from the get-go? Oh, I see. In that case, the defendant's sword wouldn't have been the cause of death. How do you respond, Prosecutor Satmari? That is the third time. The third time of what? Yeah. What the heck is this? <laughs> yes! Ow, 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 my head! What do you think you're doing? Even the merciful Holy Mother loses patience if she is struck three times. Since you never learn, you need to be punished. Why don't you let me worry about what I need and don't need? It is what you deserve for interfering with my sacred last rites for the victim. You are a brainless lawyer chasing phantoms. You know nothing. Let this humble servant of the Holy Mother give you an edifying sermon. A sermon? Now? There is a passage in the sacred scriptures of Koreanism. A cornered frog will swallow even a snake. Huh? A cornered lawyer has unexpectedly struck back hard against the prosecution. Did I get it right? No, for I am not done with my sermon. And yet, the frog still dies, its belly bitten and torn from within. Just great. And in this case, you are that frog, Defense. Um, what exactly is your point anyway? Let us assume for a moment that the victim was killed under the stage. Who then had the opportunity to do so during the show? Let's see, the people in the show were Bonnie DeFam, the victim Mr. Reyes, and Trucy Wright. Bonnie DeFam was on stage throughout the entire show, as easily confirmed by the footage from the show. Which leaves us with only one suspect, Trucy Wright. Yeah. Now do you see? The accused killed Mr. Reyes as he waited on standby in the understage passage and then placed his dead body in the coffin above, thus making the murder look like an accident. No! O oh, great and merciful Holy Mother, thus another putrid mind has been guided toward enlightenment. Ugh, I can't believe I swallowed this trick question whole! Yeah, you did! Sorry, 
sorry, but I have to raise an objection here. Athena, what are you... There's something I want to point out, Apollo. And who might you be? You strike me as a mere child in countenance. I may be young, but I have an attorney's badge just the same. And you would contribute to this discussion in that capacity? I most certainly would. You just argue that the defendant killed the victim under the stage. But let me remind you that Miss Wright is a girl. Clearly. Surely you didn't raise an objection simply to point out such an obvious fact. Your Honor, please send for this little child's guardian to come take her home. Hold it! But I'm not done with my sermon! You don't need to talk like Prosecutor Sakmati, you know. Listen, if the victim was killed in the understage passage, then his body would then have to be hauled up to the stage, right? However, Miss Wright is a young girl, and a pretty petite one at that. She couldn't possibly have hefted that large body up and put it in the coffin. That's true. It does seem like it would be a rather difficult task for the defendant. I don't think even I could do it. What do you think of that, prosecutor? Who's the child now? In my religion, the priestess of Quranism are revered as the pillars of our beliefs. So I naturally hold nothing but deep respect for women. I also think highly of the female perspective. Says the man who called this fair maiden a little child. Who's a fair maiden? I agree that your point is worth discussing, defense. How indeed was the dead body raised up into the coffin? By the accused Trucy Wright, that is. You're committed to pointing the finger at her no matter what, huh? Then you explain how that even be possible. But of course. There was a way for even a small creature like her to raise the victim's body up. Huh? Wait, you really can't explain it? I foresaw that our arguments would come to this, so I prepared a witness. Well, well, I admire your readiness, prosecutor. It is really not that difficult when one can read the ultimate outcome of any trial. He couldn't have really predicted that things would turn out like this, could he? It's pretty hard to believe. Excuse me, but may I step down now? Mm, yes, I suppose you may. One moment, Detective Sky. Huh. Um, I'm sorry for, you know, the way I handled all this. You did a fine job, Detective. Your testimony was invaluable. It was? Yes, you served well as a detective and did not allow your personal feelings to interfere. You overcame the conflict and emotions you felt and performed your duty admirably. You will be rewarded for your fine work. Oh, uh, thank you. I hope we can work together again in the future. Ema seems bewildered by the unexpected praise. I guess he's a pretty nice person, like they say, as long as you're not up against him. Now then, let us call the next witness. And now we're introduced to her. Witness, please state your name and occupation. Hello, ladies and gentlemen of the court. It's very nice to meet all of you. I'm a lagomorphing illusionist from the land of fairy tales, Bonnie de Femme. I can't wait to do some magic tricks for all of you. Please, witness. There is a time and a place for all things, including magic. Aw, but... But it would be okay if I just did some little magic, right? Come on, please? Look, everybody, everybody's waiting. Now's my chance to shine. That is your second time. My second time doing what? There will be no further warnings. You should know that from our preparatory meeting, correct? Yeah. Is no one exempt from His Holiness's rosary of suffering? May we have your testimony, witness, once you've recovered from your disappointment. Well, as a huge fan of Trucy's, I don't really want to testify against her. But I guess I have to, don't I? As a huge fan of Trucy's, huh? I hate her! I loathe her! 
I can't stand that Trucy Wright. Just because she's a little good at magic, she thinks she's all that. So this is exactly what that sniveling brat deserves. Sure, you're a real fan, all right. Of destroying Trucy, you mean. Witness testimony. The understage passage. I really can't believe that Trucy killed Mr. Reus. I guess it's possible for a small girl to lift a dead body up if she used a stage lift. Is it possible? Could Trucy really have? If Trucy did use a stage lift, I think she must have used stage lift too. I was on stage for the entire show, by the way. You were on stage the whole time? And you're sure about that? There is no question. The entire audience could testify to that fact. What's more, she is shown clearly in the TV show footage as well. I couldn't possibly have killed Mr. Reus. Not little old me. Therefore, the only person who could have killed the victim on her stage is the accused. Furthermore, by using a stage lift, even a petite young lady could have raised the body up to the stage without difficulty. You've got to be kidding me. Very well, the defense may now cross-examine the witness. There is more to Bonnie to fame than meets the eye. I really can't believe that Trucy killed Mr. Reus. You said you are a huge fan of Trucy's, isn't that right? Oh yes, I even became a magician because I wanted to be just like her. The first time I saw her, she was performing at the Wonder Bar. She was only in junior high back then, but she got up on stage with tons of confidence. And then she proceeded to win my heart with her astonishing tricks and winning smile. Hmm, she certainly sounds like she means all of that. So finally being able to perform with her must have been quite a treat for you, right? Oh yes, after all it was my chance to have her see me. Not just as a fan, but as a fellow magician. But then that horrible accident happened. It was not an accident. It was murder. Witness, please explain if you would. How a small young woman such as Trucy Wright could have raised the body. I guess it's possible for a small girl to lift a dead body up if she used a stage lift. What makes you think it would be possible? It's not like you tried it out yourself, right? Well, uh... Actually, we did try it out for ourselves. You did? Detective Sky, if you would. Oh, so that's why you made me do that. Detective Sky, what did he have you do? The prosecutor asked me to try raising one of the male police officers with a stage lift, without a single word of explanation as to why he was making me do it. You're kidding. It's as if he really can foresee all of our counter-arguments. Hmm. <laughs> Do not underestimate this, you humble servant of the Holy Mother. More like haughty. I guess that means Trucy could have lifted the dead body up. Does that mean? Is it possible? Could Trucy really have? Is what possible? Could Trucy really have what, Mr. Fenn? Please finish your sentence. Eh, well, I... Don't try to beat around the bush. Come right out and say it. Why not tell the school what you really believe? What I really believe? Of course I... Of course I don't believe Trucy could ever commit murder. Such an amazing and wonderful magician would never do such a thing. But taking all the facts into account, what else can I think? I know of at least three other unflattering things you really think about Trucy. How can you attack this girl when she is obviously speaking with reserve? There is such a thing as reading between the lines, Mr. Justice. It's sad how the youth of today lack the ability to do such a basic thing. Looking at me like that isn't going to help me stick my foot in my mouth less, Your Honor. Witness, please describe what the accused might have used to lift the dead body. All right. If Trucy did use a stage lift, I think she must have used stage lift 2. Stage lift 2? You mean the stage lift shown here on the left? That's right. 
with a stage lift. I think even a small girl could easily lift a dead body up to the stage. And so that makes her the murderer in your opinion. Of course not. I believe in Trucy. Like I said, I'm a huge fan of hers. Oh, brother. How long is she going to keep this act up? Defense, what position was stage lift 2 in after the show? Let's see. If I recall, it was in the fully raised position. Ah! And the reason why it was fully raised is because the accused used it to lift the victim's body. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Feel free to slowly mull it over while you roast over the flames of hell, you evil red pepper. So now I'm also evil. I was on stage for the entire show, by the way. You didn't have a single spare moment to slip down in the understage passage? Huh? D don't tell me you suspect me now. I'm just trying to do my job by fully examining your alibi. Depending on how solid it is, I might have to suspect you. Yes. You gotta be kidding me. Don't spit out my head and tell me it's raining, lawyer boy. I'm right there in the footage, or are you too much of an idiot to see? Huh? Mr. Fom, are you feeling all right? You seem suddenly different. Oh, uh, oops. Where did that come from, right? Oh my, I seem to have snapped there for a second, didn't I? <laughs> you didn't just snap. You broke character just now. Or rather, broke kayfabe. In any case, I was on stage the whole time performing magic. I mean, you saw me in the footage, right? My dazzling and flawless performance. Flawless? That's odd considering what you told me. You said that you made a mistake with where you positioned Mr. Hat. Yeah. Mr. Farm, to what is the defense referring? Well, I made a little mistake on stage. I was in charge of operating Mr. Hat, you see. According to the script, I was supposed to place him in the left of the coffin. But I flubbed it up and made him stand on the right of the coffin instead. And because of that mistake, Trucy had to move the stage lifts around. I feel really bad about messing Trucy up like that with my goof. <laughs> Darn it! I don't see any inconsistencies in her testimony! <laughs> now do you know who the real killer is? Come on, Gramps! Don't just sit there! Hand down your ruling pronto! Do it quick before you keel over up there! I beg your pardon! Oops! Oh, what's gotten into me? I'm so sorry. I give her another five minutes before she tears off that mask. Well, defense. Are you really to let it all go now? Of course not! I'll never give up! I see. I suppose this too is fate. The sacred scriptures Krinism describe a variety of hells for the damned. For someone like you who struggles ceaselessly against his fate, Papu Bolchig seems most appropriate. People boy what? Oh wait, that's Krinis. What sort of terrible places? Papo Borgi! A place where the more one struggles, the further one falls into the abyss. At the bottom of the abyss, a ferocious beast awaits. Think of it as something akin to an Ant Lion sandpit trap. Oh, there's one of those in my backyard. Wow, Krinus Hell is closer to home than I thought. Now then. It would appear that the witness's testimony supports the prosecution's claims, that the defendant is the only one who could have killed the victim on the stage. Ugh, how are we supposed to get out of this jam? Hey Apollo, if you can't find any contradictions, maybe it's time to use analytical psychology. You mean, I heard some discord in Bonnie's voice while she was testifying. Noise level. See? Wit is picking up on the noise in her heart too. That's right. Athena can hear things others can't with her super sensitive hearing. She can hear the emotions people suppress as a kind of noise or discord in their voices. Alright, Athena, let's give it a try. You got it! Hold it! Your Honor! I'm afraid that our witness, Miss Defam, is suffering under terrible traumatic stress due to this horrific incident. She is? 
Yes, but with that terrible death on stage and her beloved Trucy getting arrested, she's under awful strain and shock. In fact, I don't know how much more she can take before she is unfit to testify. What? Oh, I've heard of that. What is it called? Postal Stress Disorder. It's where a person becomes uncontrollably angry, I think. I read about it somewhere. That's going postal, Your Honor. This is PTSD. Post Traumatic Stress Disorder. Oh my. So that's why the witness acts so hostile at times, as if she were a different person. Yes, and I think her condition is clouding her memory of the incident. Therefore, I suggest a short therapy session for the witness. Huh? Therapy? You don't know a third thing about a magician's mental strength. I risk my life jumping through rings of fire and having my body sawn in half. Oopsie. Boy, I have to watch my temper, don't I? <laughs> Miss Sykes, please do whatever you can to help this unfortunate young lady. And what exactly is this child planning to do, Mr. Justice? With her super sensitive hearing, Miss Sykes can hear a witness's true emotions. Simply from tone and inflection, she can tell exactly what a person is feeling. I can even pick out feelings that a witness is trying to suppress or hide. Widget projects the emotions I hear in the mood matrix where I can analyze them. It sounds like some sort of spurious devilry. Though I find it hard to believe, I must ask, how do emotions constitute evidence? Hmm. While I won't say that emotions can be taken as evidence per se, I have seen how instrumental Miss Sykes' work has been in cracking a case. Therefore, I wholly support giving it a try. I say, if you're in favor of it, Your Honor, then I have no objections. Even this mere monk can see that something disturbs the witness. <laughs> I'll disturb you! Oh, thank you for understanding, Prosecutor Sadmati. Apollo, you remember how to conduct a therapy session, right? You want me to lead the session? Of course. You're the lead on this case, after all. Fair enough. But, hmm, do I need a refresher? Okay, but I think I could use a refresher. Mood Matrix Online. So Bonnie's emotions are shown here in the Mood Matrix, right? Exactly. The emotions I pick up on from her testimony are projected in this program. The Moon Matrix gives a visual representation of a witness's testimony and emotions. These four mood markers reflect fluctuations in a witness's emotions. As their testimony unfolds, the mood markers flash in reaction to the witness's feelings. When the witness feels happy or is enjoying the memory, the happy marker will light up. When the witness feels angry or frustrated, the angry marker will react. When the witness feels sad or is scared by a memory, the sad marker will blink. And when the witness feels surprised or confused, the surprise mark will tell us. Okay, I remember now. I need to find a conflict between what she's saying and which mood markers are blinking. That's right, and Mr. Fom definitely has some conflicted emotions. See? Widget reacts to the suppressed emotions I pick up and projects them as noise. If we can pinpoint the inconsistencies between her testimony and her feelings, the noise level should drop to 0% and the therapy session will be a success. When you find unexpected emotion, first pinpoint it with the L button, and then select the unexpected emotion or reaction from the four markers with A. Okay, now to give it a whirl. I guess Trucy is the one who killed Mr. Reus. Even she can move the body with that lift. I was on stage at the time. But that terrible mistake. My stupid flub caused Trucy so much trouble. I feel so bad about it. Really? Tell me, why do you feel bad? Because you seem happy about it. Got it! 